Hi, I'm JB, and welcome to my video series. These are videos I've created to support my efforts to become a certified digital marketer through Simply Learn. So please like and share my videos to help me get certified. Today we're going to talk about the expense associated with using poor grammar. The serial comma, or Oxford comma if you prefer, is a comma that identifies the last item in a list. So you can tell the difference between strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate compared to strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate. It's such a fundamental part of English grammar that it's actually the second item under the elementary rules of usage in the classic Strunk and White writing aid. In this example, it clarifies that the list consists of three items, red, white, and blue. Without the comma, you only have a pair, red, white, and blue. Here, the comma again clarifies a list of three, gold, silver, or copper. Without the comma, it might sound like a pick two choice, gold and silver or copper. Yes, I know what you're saying. The conventional wisdom is that the serial comma is no longer required. Problem is, conventional wisdom is not necessarily true. In fact, the phrase conventional wisdom originated as a pejorative. It was perhaps used most notably by economist John Kenneth Galbraith, who used it to show how comfortable commonplace beliefs could be used to resist facts that might diminish or challenge the ones people wanted to believe. So using what you might think of as an extra comma isn't a waste of space. It's critical to clear and concise communications. A great illustration of this is the recent case in Maine, where a $10 million overtime lawsuit was recently resurrected. The case involved delivery drivers who regularly worked over 40 hours a week. Since the drivers delivered perishable dairy products, the company treated them as exempt. State law exempted workers performing tasks with certain food products for health safety reasons. The law exempts people who work on the canning, processing, preserving, freezing, drying, marketing, storing, packing for shipment or distribution of agricultural produce, meat and fish products, perishable foods. The company argued no overtime was due since employees performed the exempt task of distribution. The drivers argued they weren't exempt because their jobs didn't involve packing for distribution. The court noted the absence of the comma was not adherence to convention, but an unfortunate introduction of ambiguity. The court even began its opinion by stating, for want of a comma, we have this case. It further noted that all the list elements in the law were drawn forms as subjects of the exemption, canning, processing, preserving, while shipment and distribution were objects of the preposition for. Given that the default rule of construction under Maine law was to construe ambiguous provisions in favor of the person for whom the statute was drafted to protect, the appellate court reversed the district court's summary judgment and remanded to evaluate plaintiff's contention that they neither packed perishables for shipment nor packed perishables for distribution. You can read more about this case on my blog at jbho.blog. And I've personally been impacted by the lack of a comma. I was involved in a contract dispute over language that said, company agrees to do X, comma, Y, no comma, or Z. Company argued the language provided three options, and only one need be met. That is, company agrees to do X or Y or Z. The other party argued the language meant X was required and the choice only existed between Y and Z. That is, company must do X and Y or X and Z. Because of the amounts at stake, the issue had to go to court to be resolved a dispute that could have been avoided with a simple comma. So when in doubt, comma it out. I'm JB, and that's my humble opinion. Thanks for watching.